गुड इवनिंग नमस्कार सत श्री अकाल आदाब I am Ella Pachauri, Chief Happiness Officer, Motherhood Club. And today, before I introduce our esteemed guest, a beautiful mom, I would like to read out a post from her FB wall today, where she had said, shared a post, and she wrote, "A beautiful face will age, and a perfect body will change, but a beautiful soul will always be a beautiful soul." and today we bring forward to you a most beautiful soul that i have come across and i am so pleased to welcome you sarmishtha today on motherhood talk show a big welcome from all of us to you thank you so much ila good evening a uh, hi everyone it's wonderful to be here and thanks ila for inviting me no oh, it's an honor for us and i'm very sure that today our conversation is going to take us to many 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 untouched places let's talk about them and before we talk about your journey sarmishtha let me like introduce your persona to our audience today okay <laughs> so i think most of us know most of you know sarmishtha she is an established author selling author at amazon and for her book paradise at my shore she is a photo she is uh, like incorporated her photography skills and illustration skills there in her book she is an ardent animal lover like me she has been in the corporate world for two decades and then she's been an educator and a counselor for young adults and children so today i can think of anyone else but sarmishtha to talk about her journey how she rose after becoming a mom and how she has walked on this path of poetry how did she start writing to dheere dheere karke we will start taking up our questions sarmishtha you are ready now i am sure thank you uh Oh, so we see Ekta here, and surprisingly, I'm not getting the names today. Just a minute, sir, Mr. Let me just see who all are live. Okay, yeah. Who all are watching us? Okay, Nidhi Bansal is there, okay. and Ekta is there, and I'm sure अभी थोड़ी देर में काफी लोग आ जाएंगे. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, sir, Mr. Let's begin from the beginning because I believe that our life that we live. is majorly impacted by our childhood it's majorly impacted and our parenting the way we parent our kids is also being impacted by the way we were parented by our parents absolutely so let's know a little bit about your childhood okay now where do i begin <laughs> i think it's been a dream childhood and yeah. i keep telling this to my daughter you know the way i have enjoyed my childhood she has not even gotten even half of that oh well i was born in a in my ancestral house you know in uh, Kol Kol kolkata yeah and it's been uh, a very pleasant journey and we were 18 of us living in that house Wonderful. with a huge of uh, staff and pets Okay. So apart from uh, you know my brother and I, there were three other cousins. So between the house and the school and the homes of other cousins, it's been a dream world. You know, we were just doing that because at that that time there was no like studies and all that. So there was not much studies and all. So we were only having fun. So, and uh, you know that house. it had those beautiful uh, serpentine corridors huge terrace and we used to fly kites over there and her play cricket play hide and seek so and you know when it used to rain those corridors used to get filled up and we used to make yeah. those paper boats paper boats and sail them along those long corridors and swipe them with their fingers you know the water so that the boats sail so these are the things which were so unique 
And uh, every year it was a ritual for us, you know, 30, 40 of us used to go for a holiday, annual holiday. So either to the hills or to the sea. Yeah. We had few places to go, but, you know, it was an occasion. Absolutely. And apart from that, in our family, we always had all kinds of pujas, right? Starting from Durga Puja to yeah. Shashi Puja, which we do for our children. And, you know, in Bengal, there is a saying called Baro Mashe Taro Parbon. Like 12 months got 13 festivals. Yes. So every month there was something happening in the house. And it was like uh, the whole day the house used to throb, you know, yeah. only the night they were quiet. And, you know, we never had to get milk from outside. We had a cow and there was a calf. And I still remember every two, three months, the cow used to be changed, you know, a new cow with a new calf. And uh, my grandfather had a farmhouse. So no fruits, all fruits used to come from there. And uh, once in every few days, yes, we used to go over there and have the whole day outing. There were goats, there were ducks. And in my house, we used to have dogs, cats birds and uh, fish tank and my brother used to keep white mice oh. so it was an elaborate structure you know and there was so much of fun in the house all the time yes so the other day i was discussing with you i've also grown up a part of my childhood has been spent in uh, uh, west bengal yes so we were actually being brought up in the lap of nature yes and uh, Rightly, you said, like, whenever there were rains, we used to make these paper boards. We used to oh. splash on that water coming <laughs> home, literally dirty with muck. Yes. And mom having a hard time. And our neighbors, uh, Mrs. Banerjee, okay. she also had a mini zoo at home. Okay. So, <laughs> so it was amazing. So I, I have noticed that coastal yeah. people... Mm -hmm. Coastal people are more close to nature and animals per se. Yes. Am I right? Yeah. Absolutely. They are because they are so much used to them. You know, it's a part of their life. Yeah. You know, Ila, that you said about the storm, I remember, you know, there were yeah. a few coconut trees far away. And, you know, yeah. in the wind used to swing like this, you know, and it was so beautiful, you know. Just amazing. You must be so happy walking down the memory lane today. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Amazing. You feel so good. You know, I mean, life has changed so much. Yeah. So what, uh, like, uh, where did you do your higher education? Yeah. Actually, uh, I, I finished my uh, school in Kolkata. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my father took up a new assignment in Bombay. So okay. although I wanted to study medicine, I qualified everything. But for that, I had to stay back in Kolkata, which I refused to do. I was very close to my dad. And can you imagine Bombay at the age of 18? You couldn't have missed that. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, nothing doing, I'm going. So there I joined my college. I completed my graduation. I did uh, chemistry honors. That was my principal subject and my subsidiary yeah. microbiology. Okay. So along with that, I had physics and uh, uh, the language. Uh -huh, that is also one more thing. Yeah. You know, there, uh, the second language had to be either Hindi or Marathi. Hmm. Now, I never knew either one the one. Hindi, little bit I knew, whatever. So I said, now what? I have to learn Hindi. So, you know, reading, writing, everything I learned at that, that age to pass the exam at least. <laughs> so once I finished uh, graduation, I did my post-graduation in advertising and marketing. Okay. Then I got into corporate because I was always uh, telling myself that I have to start working, you know, be independent and all that. Mm -hmm. And my dad always used to say, that, why are you in such a hurry? You further your, you know, learnings and all. I said, no, nothing doing. So I started working. And uh, uh, then I, I worked for Mahindras in Bombay. 
And okay. I was mostly with uh, marketing and corporate communication. These are the two areas that I was doing. And uh, then after that, uh, we again came back to Kolkata. There I joined the Tatars. Okay. So I worked for them. And uh, after almost two decades, I said, now enough, no more. Because in between, I also had my daughter. But then that is another story. I'll come later, how I managed both the areas. So then I said that, okay, I had enough of it. And I was always very fond of children. So I said, why not I get into the education line where I can be with them, you know. Okay. Then I qualified myself. I did my Montessori course. I did my TTC. Then I started my BA, but halfway through I gave up, you know. I couldn't complete it because I was already attached to a school and there was so much of, uh, you know, work over there. Yeah. Uh, I, I started working with Calcutta International School. So that school had a different board altogether. You know, they had the London board, which is the Edexcel board. So that yeah. had nothing to do with our Indian uh, form of education. So there I gained a lot of experience. And uh, then I did, uh, then after that, I came to Delhi. So when I came to Delhi, I don't know, I never suited. I tried one or two schools, but I found that I was not suitable. So I said, nothing doing now. So let me do on my own. So then I started on my own. I started taking children uh, in the higher classes for their physics, chemistry. And uh, for the younger children, I started with uh, creative writing. So that is how I started doing. And then I did uh, my child counseling from NCRT. OK. So <laughs> oh, my god. Take a moment. <laughs> So I tried doing something or the other related to where I was, you know, and uh, it's been a great journey. Yes. As Ekta is saying that <laughs> you are so, so versatile. Oh, no. So like, <laughs> Thank <what>? you, Ekta. <laughs> what motivated you to keep on studying and exploring your horizons and going there, 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 there. <laughs> what was your motivation? Actually, I always want to learn new things, you know, basically yeah. that is the thing. And uh, where I find interest, I just hang on there. That's, that's my nature. So when I got with children, I thought that let yeah. me understand them better. And then, you know, when the parent teacher meetings used to happen, you know, the, uh, the counseling with, that I used to do, I used to find that the parents were very happy. And I learned a lot from them, you know, the interaction. Yeah. So that is where I thought that let me do this course, you know. So that's how it happened. Wonderful, wonderful. And Ekta says, I oh. want you to help us with our endeavor, Kiddo Mentoring by Ekta Segal. Yes, oh, you need your help. <laughs> We've got a quite a bit of kids. And we'll really appreciate it if it you could. Be my, it will be my pleasure. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So let's go back to that natural course of life uh, that a woman faces, woman or a man, getting married. Oh, yeah. Actually, so, marriage was uh, my choice. It was yeah. never like, uh, you know. Uh, so, so when my dad said that uh, you should get married, first, I was very against it, you know. I mm. said, no, nothing doing. I don't want to get married. Then my father came up with a few rishtas, you know. He said, look at this, look at that and all that. You know, because I was very close to him, you know. So instead of yeah. interacting with my mom, I used to interact more with my dad. So finally, I agreed, you know. And uh, then we met and I found that there was one common interest, which was music. Hmm. So, so my husband is a very good singer. And uh, he's I'm born sure you must also be you are you must be a very beautiful singer. You've got a beautiful voice. I love music. <laughs> mm -hmm. I try to sing, but I can't sing very well. <laughs> yeah. So then uh, what happened, you know, uh, it happened, you know, I said, OK, then, you know, we got married and this and that. So then his job. Uh, he was he's with HR and he's mostly posted to the projects. So yeah. I have been more or less a single mother. 
Okay. I have brought up my daughter Anvesha on my own because I had two factors, you know. I didn't want Anvesha to change her school so frequently, you know. Yeah. And I had a job to do which I didn't want to leave and go. So it was like, uh, you know, I had to do mostly everything, uh, which I don't regret because I'm very happy because I, I mean, I could do it. Like I didn't have to ever feel that, oh my God, I'm missing out on something, you know, that I, I can't uh, pursue my life. So it was okay. Yeah. <laughs> So I didn't really face any difficulty as such, you know, I managed. And I had this wonderful uh, lady who was uh, with Onisha all the time, you know, and she stayed with me for 14 years. So from the time Anvesha was born till 14, she was there. And I'll tell you one incident that I've been, I've been so lucky with my staff, you know, thank God yeah. for that. Uh, this, this lady, her name was Ranu. So one day what happened when I came back from my work, I used to always see that she was with Anvesha feeding her. That was her feed time. So that day when I came back, I saw that she was eating, but you know, her lip area was swollen. Then her nose was dark, black and all that. So I got a scare. I said, what happened? So it seems that she fell down from the slide, you know, from the top of the slide, she had fallen down in school. And the school attended to her everything, you know. They even even had a house doctor. But what did uh, Ranu do? At, at that time, we didn't have the mobile. So the yeah. school gave a call to the house on the landline. And Ranu didn't even inform me at the office. She took the driver. She went to school, got her back. And she was with her all the while. So when I asked her, why didn't you call me, you know, to the office? She said, no, ma'am, why should I? You know, you're working. I mean, that kind of a consideration. I was overwhelmed, you know. And she stayed with me for 14 years. So, you know, that one big area was taken care of. Yeah. Um, and whenever she used to go on leave, you know, it was like a major <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> oh, yes. uh, and, so and you know, I tell you... Uh, hmm. Yeah, you yeah. Nee, nee, please, please, please. Yeah. Go ahead. And you know, like I was saying that I'm so like, you know, I mean, uh, not happy, but so blessed with my staff. You know, just a few days back uh, on this uh, Guru Nanak's birthday. Yeah. You know, they were all patakas and all in the morning and at six o'clock. I don't know how. Minnie, my younger one, she ran out of the house. Outside the gate, everything. The guard mm. comes and tells me that, you know, she has ran out on the road. She was lost. I thought she's lost. Yeah. And, you know, we went out with my driver, my staff. We were looking for her for three hours. And finally, about two kilometers from my house, I found her. So without them, I couldn't have done it, you know. It was all mm. muddy and, you know, I mean... It's like my blessings, really. Sometimes I feel I'm really grateful. Today we have you chose to give our talk a title, Unlocking Potentials. Yeah. So I believe that not choosing to move with your husband where he was posted, staying as a single parent looking after your daughter taking care of a nice uh, like a very very responsible job also so you were already on the way to unlocking your potential what what kept you sane you must be missing your husband sometimes there must be some days or some moments when you must have felt lonely or you must have felt like i can't do this yeah, Ila, very honestly, what happens, you know, this happens to me when I'm not well. Yeah. That's the only time I feel it, very honestly, that, you know, I mean, if there was somebody, I feel it like that, you know. Otherwise, basically, I'm a very independent person, you know. I've always been that way. So and I have, got, uh, I have got a very few set of, uh, you know, good friends, and my cousins, a few cousins of mine, you know, with who I relate well. Yeah. 
but then you know when you are all alone with a child it's a different state altogether so if you are not in sync with your own mind your own self you cannot manage it so i had been into yoga meditation and uh, art of living for a long time you know and i have seen that it is possible it's not that you cannot manage on your own it all depends on how you are viewing it like internalizing your uh, self yes hmm? staying in Organizing touch with yourself, yourself. yeah so meditation definitely yourself. comes because i have also raised my daughter single handedly because my husband always had a traveling job yes he was away for days and days and days and it was just me and my daughter and like mm-hmm. and you said like my reading yes kept me sane and meditation kept me yes. sane yes. because there were times like like say you know what a husband nahi hota husband ke sath mein family bhi aati hai na you have those other responsibilities also as a daughter in law as a daughter to your parents yes. so there are so many segments in our lives and it's very easy to lose oneself yes exactly you know ila this is this is where i feel you know like today's topic is like you said na that unlocking your potentials yeah now in you know uh, i feel each one of us of us is unique each one of us gifted now yeah. once we internalize things we you know look into ourselves we'll always find that we have got so many potentials which we must identify we must unlock and we must explore yeah if we do not do it we are just you know focusing ourselves in one area like even as a parent if i was just doing my job and looking after my child i would have stagnated you know yeah because how much of work can you do tell me something if you're going to work from morning till evening i mean there are so many things in life that is happening nice things beautiful things you know which you are actually missing out on so you have to balance things you know yeah so once you learn to balance i think it's fine you can always manage you know you know why why i always want to like touch this topic on self exploration on yes. going and looking deep within to explore your own strength is to tell the women and men out there jo abhi dekh rahe hain ya jo baad mein dekhenge hamare show ko because you know like it is very easy to play the victim card absolutely my hands are tied i have got three kids four kids two kids i have got a set of in laws i have yeah. got my work and i can't do anything to change my situation yes ekta and me on a day to day basis come across so many so many ladies who are not who complain who crib but they are not ready to act upon the, their own situation they are not ready to find a solution and act upon it it's very sad you know really and you know it's these are one life one life right talented women yes they are qualified they are talented but they are not able to stand up for themselves because they are not looking within themselves they are not trying to search for themselves yes, yes. and motherhood club yes. always wants everyone to look into their potential to very true ha main hamesha bolti hu ek khali glass se aap kisi ko pani nahi pila sakte to jab tak hamara khud ki khushi ka ghada nahi bharega hum khushi nahi baant sakte so that brings me to the next question you have been an educator you are an educator and you have seen maybe two generations nikal gaye honge aapke paas se what is the difference in the dynamics of society then and now what is it that you notice i think our g- generation is being sandwiched between the two that's the first thing i feel because yeah. what we have done before us you know when we were children and what our children is today there is a huge difference 
yeah between those two parameters it's like unthinkable so we are the ones we have to really adjust understand the differences that is going you know we were more traditionally brought up yeah religiously told certain things and we were not and as far as education is concerned we were reading from chapter to chapter study of these chapters these are the questions that will come today as an educationist i find it is way beyond there are no chapters today you just have to know that's all just yeah. keep learning and children are so inquisitive they are always asking questions and pertinent questions which you cannot ignore and the day has gone when we even i used to think when my daughter was growing up that you know she's becoming very smart she's answering me back etc etc but today when i look back i find that she had reasons where yes. where i was not looking into it you know so i have to develop myself i have to come to what is happening in life today reach that so we have to reach that level to be on their um, to be at par with at their par, intelligence yes, yes. their reasoning you know, Ita, what i think we cannot be at par with them yeah it's not possible because <laughs> we have stalled at one point you know very honestly yeah. at least i have I mean, but i show it yes. yes but i show yeah. it that yes i am with you you know that kind of a thing but internally i don't agree to certain things so when when my daughter came to college oh. she yeah. was studying in lady shri ram yeah and uh, when she went to study there and then she, like all sorts of girls used to visit our home because girls who were from outside stations yes. they used to come to our home for the weekends oh. and because they were homesick in the first year of college okay and in the second year the visits became less and in the third by the third year they wouldn't visit at all and then i used to ask my daughter why mm-hmm. isn't she visiting us anymore why isn't she ma she is gone out for a weekend with her boyfriend okay do you have a boyfriend no i don't feel the need of of a boyfriend i have got good friends oh. so, so she taught me not to be surprised or shocked by the lifestyle of the kids of this generation and i love this honesty in them you know this if thoughtfulness if, friend, if any of her friend yes is a homosexual she mm-hmm. will not hide it even mm-hmm. the kids don't hide it they may hide it from their own parents but they used to come out very honestly in front of me asking for advice mm-hmm. and i'm very proud of this generation because they are outright honest they have got analytical minds absolutely and absolutely. they are not afraid to ask questions no. not at all when i was growing yeah. i remember many questions like i wanted to question the systems in our kitchens where we were not allowed to touch the utensils or the yes. when we were menstruate yes yes i wanted i had many questions in my mind mm-hmm. and I have always been very vocal, very extrovert. मैं लड़ाकी मानी जाती थी घर में फिर भी मैं बहुत क्वेश्चन नहीं करती थी and in my uh, case it was different i was my father understood me much more than my mother same and my same. mother used to go up to my dad and say that look you are spoiling her you are letting her do this 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 etc so he said that nothing doing let her learn let her make mistakes let her find out in life you know what it is because how long will you protect her so i learned that you know and i started doing the same thing with uh, my daughter and my husband whenever he used to be around he used to see my daughter and she used to go to a, a, a co education school and there were boys coming in and she had friends and like you said you know they used to go out spend the weekends and all so i 
but he used to be shocked. He said, what is this you are doing and this and that. So one day I told him straight away. I said, look, you are not here. I am handling everything. Yeah. Now you will not question me. Full stop. That was the end of the story. I said, if anything goes wrong, then I am there. And if I seek your help, you have to help me. That's all. Because Wonderful. times change, you know, everything is changing. If you don't change, we are just in a hell hole sitting over there. It is no point. So we we have to evolve constantly. We have to evolve karna padega to like keep pace with their steps. Of course, as you said, we are stalled at some point or other. And we have an interesting question from Ekta now. Yeah. While this generation is open, outspoken, thinking, and analytical, are they somewhere losing the conventional values? Now, what is conventional? That's the question I would ask, you know, what yeah. is conventional? That is also man created. It's society created. So, I mean, see, we have been brought up with certain conventional values. So we are valuing it so much. So we are questioning it. But if we rise above it and see the present social structure scenario, I think we will also not think about the conventional values. Yeah. Yes. But certain things are there like respecting. Respect adults, you know. You must know how to talk to them. But you see, even today I have seen children talking to their parents, which I don't find respectful. But that has yeah. been done. It's been accepted. So it is very confusing, you know. I mean, how do you... That, so that, that is why I feel we are stalled at one point, which we don't want to accept, you know. And at the same time, we are trying very hard to be with them. Yeah. So there's always a tussle between a generation to another. Like one of my friends, her son touches the feet of every elder that he meets. Mm -hmm. At the same I time, my daughter says that why should one touch someone's feet if you don't genuinely respect that person? Same thing. Even An Anvesha says the same thing. That why do you have to show off? Why do you have to show things which is not true? Kathy, if uh, like I have so many friends. Yes. Some friends who come to my place, Pupul uh, will go and spend time with them. She'll come, she'll greet them, she'll sit with them, she'll have a conversation with them. But there are a few, few friends whom she doesn't like or she, she doesn't agree with their because knowing their history, ki, this uncle yes. doesn't respect his wife or yes. he's a womanizer or yeah, auntie bought bitchy hai, bought gossip karti hai. She will not come out to spend, even say yeah. a hello. And I, I do not force her because they have a mind of their own. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah. and let them be. It is their life that they're going to lead now. We will not lead yeah. their lives for them. You know? yeah. yeah. And Sneha Tidi is saying contemporary is conventional now. Very right. Very true. Absolutely. So we are, we are getting very lovely comments and uh, today we've got a nice viewership. Like, let oh. me welcome them. Let's let me like welcome them with their names. Oh. Manjulata, Sweta Sundar, Ekta, Snedat, Rama Sarinji, Mukesh Pitnagarji, Renu Dhawan Kapoor, Suraksha Ji. And uh, kafiyo ke naam nahi bhi dikh rahe, But you know, we are having lovely comments and oh, some discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. So... <laughs> That's really Renu nice. Uh, Renu Dhawan Kapoor says that attitude of today's generation is not much good towards elders. Mostly parents complain the aggressiveness of their children in the PTMs. Yes. Aggression is a major issue. It's a major issue, you know. I think aggression arises from the fact that parents at home, they don't try to understand the child. Hmm. It starts there, you know. A child's character is always, you know, engraved at home. Decided at By home. a child is seven years old, you know, he is done with, you know. Then 12 years, he's made. You cannot change the child anymore. So that first seven years from three to seven is such an important age where you really need to, you know, be with that uh, and understand properly. 
what is your and suggestion also, to parents young parents now what is your suggestion to young parents who are in this dilemma bachche se pair chhuwana hai ki nahi chhuwana hai like bahut sari cheeze hoti hain like there are so many things like they want their kids to obey them all the time yes they want their kids to stick to a particular time table when they themselves not be going to bed at time getting up in time so, okay absolutely. then the people asking the kids to be very polite don't shout don't shout aur jab aapas mein baat kar rahe to chilla ke baat kar rahe hain so what matlab so that means that these parents of today have also grown up seeing all this during their kids yes so this is being transferred from generation to generation absolutely and you see this uh, yeah. what ida i feel is that this contradiction yeah is something which affects a child there should never be any contradiction in the house you see if a parent is talking loudly and asking yeah. the child talk softly it's not right you shouldn't be doing it so i think at certain stages the parents need to be educated than the child yeah <laughs> there should be uh, so, so i think schools must also have a counseling department cell counseling cell for, for parents, parents now yes yes if Absolutely. you find an aggressive child if you find a subdued child what the is parents, the home situation yes 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 this has to come out and shweta yeah. says when the child is silenced at home or shushed he will become a bully outside very true yes that is also true because you see he is withholding everything at home he yeah. is scared at home so all that energy a child the amount of energy he has got if you are not going to focus it in the right areas it's going to come out as as aggression as a, a bully everything you know so see i feel the basic education of a child is the home it's not the school so you have to be in order to be a good parent first and foremost is that never have contradictions that's the most important thing you know because that is where we go wrong if a yes. child sees right from the start that yes my mother does this 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 then you see when you are trying to follow the asking the child to follow that it comes automatically to him and even if it does not then he will sit down with you and talk and say that why is it like this why yeah. does it feel you see that interaction between the uh, child and the parent is very important the freedom you know to talk question find out it's very important i mean i'll tell you when i was in school i used to uh, take classes you know, some of the children used to come and talk to me they used to tell me yeah. that you know i cannot speak to my mother so i'm talking yeah. to grown up children so then i had to talk to the mother separately and i said never make this an issue at home because this is how we start you see it 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 hurts our ego that how is yeah. it my child gone and spoken there and not to me so i said i'm just asking with folded hands never do that because yeah. that is the first you're going to just you know i mean i have seen it happening with my daughter whenever i have not tried to understand her i have tried to you know say that you are wrong there is a gap grown between so i got very scared i said let me not do it anymore so i have learnt it my way you know you should never do that yeah like sweta says i watch many shows on netflix and uh, amazon prime with my daughters many of my friends are shocked but i feel they need the confidence to share this with family absolutely so good sweta absolutely right yeah, even i agree with you. yeah and we have kiran datta welcome kiran and she says that we have to set an example we don't we can't force our child to do what you want them to do exactly like and i said you have to set an example uh, there are many parents now who say ki i didn't go out to mother especially i didn't go out to work because i was bringing you up oh and still you are doing this okay so here okay. you are losing respect on two counts like qualitative and quantitative time sharing yes yes these are two different things 
and you, you really know one to 30 minutes or 10 yeah. 20 minutes of quality time to spend with your child correct, correct. not taking them to task kyun nahi hua teri shikayat kyun aayi but what's yeah. the problem let's talk about how your day was yes. and you in know Ila, what i feel over all here is this us, all three of us my husband yeah. myself and my daughter huh. whenever we huh. meet in the evening huh. we make it a point to ask how was your day Correct. Yes. And we genuinely ask this. It's not about, they're just, it's not a brushed question. No. It's, it's something the, you really want to know. Yeah. You want to know how was your day today? That's most you important. Know, you know something, Ila? If you don't know what's happening in your child's life, that's the saddest thing that can happen. Today, all these things are happening. Why? Because we want to brush aside certain things. Because yeah. we don't agree, we don't want to listen. We are scared if we say we're going to have a tassel over it. These are the issues. But why you can eradicate all that? Yeah. Just sit down and talk frankly. I mean, they are grown ups today, you know. It's and they know much more than what we used to know at that age. So give them that respect. You know, we we have we ask for respect. We're not respecting them. Yes, so so true, Sarmish. I'm so happy to have this conversation with you. And like here we are two like grown up moms of grown up daughters. <laughs> but really, and but every experience is different. Let's move to your journey of becoming a writer. So you've been writing all along, along, or you started writing quite yeah. recently. No, I'll tell you something. I mean, how I developed the uh, interest in writing. Yeah. Uh, first of all, you know, I'll go back to my childhood again. You know, both my parents were voracious readers. Yeah. So, and my mom, although she never worked out, you know, she was she was a homemaker. My dad it was, you know, he used to sit down with me, read, and uh, you know, so I developed that reading. And then when we, I was in class one, we had this. Uh, a uh, British uh, teacher, English teacher, Emily, uh, yeah, her name was Emily Watson. So she introduced creative writing. And you know what she used to do? She used to come to the class and she used to say, just start writing whatever you want to. So many lines, only one thing you have to remember, you cannot repeat the words. When you want yeah. to say something, say it differently, that's all. And no topic given. You said you write whatever you want to. And another lovely thing she used to do is this, that she used to come to the class and first thing she used to ask that, is everyone happy? And somehow whoever was not happy would always come and talk to her. And she had that magic about her, you know, that boy or the girl was so happy after that, you know, and they really put their mind in their work. So that's where I started developing creative writing. Then, of course, school magazines, college magazines. Then, to be very honest, uh, during work phase and all, everything got chanted out. There was no writing. Sometimes maybe, you know, sitting out in the ba balcony, looking at the moon. I used to think something and write down. But nothing otherwise, you know, nothing used to come. Then when COVID happened, that's where I started again, you know. And I picked up and those long three months we got, I published this book also. So I said, I've done something. So most of us have COVID to thank yes. a lot Absolutely. for and we have to thank this. Uh, yes. okay. It brought out the best of our inner personalities. I know. I our know. potentials. Yes. In, like, we unlocked more potentials within us. More, more potentials, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so many friends of mine, I know that they never used to write or read. Mm -hmm. uh, they started doing all that, you know, because they had time in hand. Could like, also I, give people some time to make some decisions in their life. Decisions. Yes. Introspect. Yes. yes. Absolutely. Very true. Very true. It was it was an experience for some. It was really the worst they could face. And for some people, it's like you said, it's unlocking the potentials. So it's been good and bad, you know, in both respects. 
So any more books like uh, I I know you are a part of many anthologies, maybe seven or more anthologies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> about seven. Yes, I've done seven. Yeah. It with an Amazon um, bestseller also. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I would like to like let's yeah. uh, talk a little bit about our society yeah. in general. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah. every Thursday for our audiences today also mm-hmm. like last week last Thursday Ekta started initiated. Yeah. this thread mm-hmm. of conversation mm-hmm. about emotional health of men yes Because i saw today there was a post yes i read that yes. yeah. Yeah. our society is largely mm-hmm. impacted by the mm-hmm. male uh, population yes. mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. their decision making their yes. thought process and you know like so last week also like uh, though we are trying to get up a like regular mm-hmm. conversation they get a good mm-hmm. conversation or threads out of that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. today also i made a post yes so i saw the edit yes about male aggression mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. why are we so unhappy because you are into art of living you are mm-hmm. you have done mm-hmm. lots of, uh, you are on that spiritual path mm-hmm. what makes our society so unhappy and dissatisfied see if we talk about it from the from a man's point of view i think you know the conditioning of the society has been such that uh, men is the protector men is the strongest men shouldn't do this men shouldn't do that you know so i think this social structure itself is wrong because we all started off with a patriarchal society and men were supposed to be much stronger but if you get to see ila a woman is nine times stronger than a man yes both physically and me- mentally i mean giving birth is what i mean what kind of physical uh, power you need to do that how can a man match that he cannot do it mentally you see when a husband passes away the wife adjust better whereas other way round it is not so yeah so you see it is not true that men are stronger and once we put this thing in them there are certain lots not all men you know i wouldn't call all men are aggressive in fact if you get to see men are mentally far more transparent than women yes you know they don't hold grudges they don't backbite you they will not gossip whatever they say they say it in the open and just be done with you know so i don't believe men are stronger but it is that projection that has to be you know that has been created in the society and a handful of them takes advantage of that and i think genetically there is something wrong with them mm-hmm. a normal man is aggressive he quietens down he says sorry but a man who goes beyond that i wouldn't call him normal whether it's a man or a woman yeah i have got all regard and respect for men you know means i have seen you know really good men in my life you know i can't complain but it is so you know i still remember you know since we are on this topic that i have always found my father very strong and very you know like he was a very quiet sort he never spoke uh, you know much but uh, he used to always speak his mind and be at it i have seen him once in my 38 years of life crying that when my grandmother passed away hmm that also he was sitting right in one corner of the house and i knew exactly where to find him he was sitting all alone and he was crying there that's the only day i saw him you know otherwise he was strong but you see emotions emotions are there in everybody and it comes out with the right person the right way do you think that the rise in rapes rape cases is because men are not able to pinpoint how to vent out their emotions or is it just that physical need or the power that they feel within themselves to dominate women i think basically it is uh, the feel of the power that comes mm. first that uh, rises from aggression 
I wouldn't say it's always the hatred against women. No, it's the power and it's the need. When the need is not met, men will be more so like that. That's what I feel. And again, there has to be genuinely something wrong with uh, certain men who goes beyond the limit. You know. Yeah. It's sad, but we have to now make a conscious decision of talking about it, of yes. discussing it. And and I think we should freely talk to men about it, you know, yes. instead of women giving our views about men. I think men should come out in the open and say that what do they feel about it? And I can I can tell you, Ila, if you start off with that, you will see 90 percent of the men you will find them. They are basically wonderful people. Yeah, they don't agree to this. Yes. But this handful few who who get, who escapes the judiciary system goes out on the road, moves around. If they pass you by, you won't even know it's the man. I mean, why, this is what this do, you, why do you blame the judiciary, Sarmishta, when mm -hmm. girls or ladies of the family, if yes. they are molested or raped by their family men, I then know. they are caught. Absolutely. No woman, tere chacha hai, tere papa ko pata nahi lagna chahiye. I know. Mere bhai, mere bhai aisa nahi ho sakta. Tujhe galat fahmi hui hai. Huh. So it is our society that actually gives the first refuge to these people who protects right. them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I feel a woman can be another woman's worst enemy, you know. A man will never be. A woman is always. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the standard rule I have seen. I don't know why, but it is so. Uh, Renu Dhawan Kapoor, very nice discussion. I think there is a need of fatherhood club. Motherhood club has got a good strength of fathers now. And we yes. are actually planning to like maybe now in 2023, we'll start having these series of panel discussions. Yes. And you have to be a part of those discussions, Sarmishta. Yes. Because you are, I'm sure you're going to bring lots to the table. Lots <laughs> to the table, yeah. Yes. So... Now it's almost time for us to wrap oh, it up, wrap up yeah. this evening, and I wish we could prolong it a little bit more. Wonderful. But yeah. before we leave, we would love to hear a poem written by you. Okay, sure, I'll do that. Yeah. Then I would like to read out a poem when, uh, since we are on the uh, mind discussion, you know, about the yeah. potentials and all. Then I was just thinking that, uh, you know, if I read out a poem, which is called uh, Blush. Now, that poem I wrote thinking about our emotions that go through our mind. And uh, I try to compare them to colors. Okay. Like how you can change the colors so frequently, you know, the mind also, the emotions change. One time we are vibrant, next time we are down. We are happy, we are sad, you know. So I just read out that poem called Colors. Colors of the mind are close between from one to another too soon. As you ponder, so you wander. It's like the marvelous moon. How the moon shifts between the clouds becomes yeah. golden, then orange. Happy just now and sad again, the laughter turning to tears, the colors of holy, all shining and bright, wipe away the fears. Happiness, laughter, colors galore, so rich the shades of hue, colors of the mind, are close between and only just a few. Color of the heart is only red and the minds are close between. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Your, your poems are short, but they carry an in-depth message. I really love reading your poems. I really love them. <laughs> uh, and Ekta has just put up this question yeah. while you were reading your poem. 
um juvenile crime is on the rise why so it's again the same thing i think everything arises from the home front if a child is not looked after well not treated well not respected most of the time it is that it comes out in the form of aggression but again there are a handful few who has genuine problems so the genuinity has to be handled see the point is this why it gets so aggressive and so beyond our control is that we ignore it yeah like ila you said something happens at home we just say that don't talk about it similarly for a child also if a mother is seeing something wrong we'll just say no he cannot do it ignoring 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 it reaches that point you know where the burst out like that yeah so it's our society who has to really you know i mean be agile and alert about the changes very true and and now, Ina, by the way i must tell you about your poetry i love reading your poetry and they are in hindi so i take a lot of time to read but at the end i get the point and if it is, reaches you one way or the yeah. other it does yes i am honored i am honored thank you so much and you are really dealing with issues which are so important and so contemporary thank you so much so still fun. learning lots to learn yes and <laughs> lots to learn because life is an upward journey towards yeah. learning absolutely absolutely no way never in my life our life should we say ab ho gaya i know it can't be yeah. it can yeah and you know ila it's one life yeah you're giving one chance live it well and don't bother what what other people are saying you know people will always say things and yeah. ultimately people has no time they will say they will forget they will lead their own life it's you who's going to sit and think oh my god so what's the point it's a waste of and time you know before we leave some okay. pearls of wisdom on self love sharmishtha because it is the utmost important thing in one's life self love how to feed one self with love see first of all what i feel is this is entirely my uh, opinion is that you have to accept your mistakes yeah if you don't accept your mistakes you think that you are right all the time that is not self love when you are accepting yourself as you are and you are trying to improve upon the areas you think it's not good or it is not acceptable to others it's not that you have to be acceptable to others all the time yeah but people who are important to you if they tell you something then you should sit up and think about it criticism is not good but from criticism if you see that something is benefiting you you must accept it how about accept self criticism oh yes i am my worst critic worst i don't think anybody criticizes me so much as i do i'm i'm always finding my faults if somebody is telling me that it's beautiful it's wonderful the first thing i would ask is that what is it wrong that you find in it what is that you don't like about it you see when you try to be a perfectionist is also not good you know yeah. it frustrates you sometimes from within so i've learned to control it now <laughs> it's been so enriching in my personal capacity to be talking to you and let me once again thank tapasya kiran suraksha ji sweta rashmi sanganeria kiran datta manjulata mukesh ji and so many others who have been actually sharing so much of love through their comments and compliments you can go back and <laughs> respond to them individually yeah, sarvesh so yes huh? i'm so blessed i'm so blessed i had an amazing time and we are getting some beautiful uh, like aaj bahut pyar mil raha hai bahut pyar mil raha hai humko and so Thank grateful you so. to you all for joining in yes and this hour went like this 
i know okay <laughs> and uh, like uh, we could we could actually talk for four more hours on this particular topic i know <laughs> So we look forward to many more enriching sessions with you, Sir Mishtha, and sure. we need your help and hand holding on many other oh, fronts because oh. you know motherhood club ke three pillars hain health, wealth, happiness, mm -hmm. and yes. you are an integral part of our group. So please be there to bless us always, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, and thank you everyone for joining me. Yes. Thank you for this engaging conversation. Everybody has been liberally sharing their thoughts here today okay. while you were talking. So amazing, amazing session. Thank you all once again. Please stay safe. The weather is changing. Enjoy this onset of winters, and keep, keep, keep your involvement as much as possible with our group in initiatives. Thank you for your support. So, abhi recently, Sir Mishtha, we collected thirty grants for a terminally ill child, and we didn't know whether we'd be happy to able to help the child. I know, I know. It's a wonderful effort, you know. Such blessings, uh, because of God's yeah. blessings, that He mm. chose us to be the yeah. medium, and yeah. then through all of you who came forward, who opened your hearts, please keep blessing kids like this. every breath is important and it's very painful for parents to see their kids struggling to jab jab bhi zarurat pade aise hi apna dil kholiye and today on behalf of ekta monica and myself i want to thank you once again for everything and please keep your love and support flowing for us thank you so much thank you so much sir mishta we'll meet soon thank you thank you